Almost a half a trillion dollars of inflationist liberal deficits mean more dollars chasing fewer goods, driving higher prices. But the Prime Minister says he doesn't think much about monetary policy. Clearly. Uh, that's no surprise. After all, it's just inflation. <laughs> Given that housing and gas prices are up by a third, has he had time since he got off the surfboard to think a little bit more about monetary policy? I just want to remind the honourable members, I know we've been gone for a while and we're back, but when we're talking in the House, we can't mention someone's name uh, in the House. We refer to them as their title or by their, uh, their, uh, their writing. I just wanted to make that clear in case all of you forgot. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, uh, while the Conservatives play silly partisan games, we are focused on Canadians. Uh, we know uh, that what Canadians are facing is a serious situation, and that is why we have taken real action. First of all, in disagreement with the Conservatives, we invested to support Canadians through the pandemic. It wasn't just the right solution for the health crisis, it was also the right solution to make sure our economy would come roaring back. And that's why we're moving forward on investments like child care and housing to make sure that we're, we're helping Canadians through this affordability challenge as well. Here, here. The Honourable Member for Carleton. Well, every time he creates a new program, the cost of the said object goes up. For example, he spent $70 billion on affordable housing to make housing prices go up by almost $300,000. Wow. And many members of this House were not even born when Liberals first started to promising to make daycare affordable. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, when will he realize that more dollars chasing fewer goods means higher prices, and that the more he spends, the higher the cost? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the member for Carleton and indeed the Conservative approach on the economy is well known by Canadians, and that's why it was so... It was I just want to make sure we're okay to continue. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, they were soundly rejected three times in a row by Canadians. Uh, our focus has been on growing the middle class and supporting uh, hard-working Canadians throughout. That's exactly what we've been doing. When we put forward a plan for $10 a day child care that's been accepted by a number of Conservative Premiers across the country, the Federal Conservatives promised to rip it up. As we choose to move forward on investing in housing, they want to give tax breaks to landlords to sell their buildings. That was the wrong approach, Mr. Speaker. This is the right one. The Honourable Member for Carleton. He likes to blame his inflation on something that's happening in a faraway place around the world. Why is it then that Canadian consumers are paying higher rates of inflation than Saudi Arabia, Switzerland, Singapore, India, China, Japan, Germany, Italy, France, the UK, the Eurozone, in fact every country except the money printing mammoth south of the border has lower inflation than us. Why doesn't he take responsibility for the higher cost of living that his out of control spending is piling on the backs of Canadians? I am impressed to see the high esteem in which the member from Carleton seems to hold me that I was able to create a global inflation crisis with our initiatives to support Canadians through this pandemic. Because that's exactly what he is saying. Everywhere in the world they are seeing record high inflation and here in Canada uh, we continue to invest in ways to support them with world class child care investments, with housing, with investments in reconciliation, in fighting climate change and building a better future while they choose to hide their heads in the sand. Honourable Member for Carleton. 
pense que le premier ministre a manqué les... I think the prime minister got the facts wrong. Other countries have lower inflation than here. France, Italy, Germany, Japan, the UK all have lower inflation rates, much lower than Canada. Only the US, which is spending money like crazy, has a higher inflation rate. And he knows that. We know that the Prime Minister doesn't think about monetary policy because it's just inflation. But he should think, is he thinking about the real costs he's putting on Canadians' shoulders? Once again, I would remind members, perhaps it wasn't understood when I said in English, I'll say it in French, when you're in the House, you refer to other members by their riding or by their title. I think that's clear now. I've said it in both languages. The right on. an expression I used to use as a teacher if the member for Carlton spent more time doing his homework and less time with puns, he might understand that the whole world is dealing with an inflation crisis. And yes, it's a serious crisis in all countries, more serious in the U.S. than here. But that's why we are coming up with concrete solutions like investing in childcare, creating more spaces, and investing in housing. We will continue to be there for Canadians while the Conservatives are obsessed with me. We are in a housing crisis where people cannot find a home to call their own. It is impossible for people to find a home. They're seeing the forces of speculation driving up the cost of housing, and this federal government and previous governments haven't invested enough money in building homes that people can actually afford. Given this crisis, why isn't the Prime Minister responding to the seriousness of this crisis with the response necessary to help people find a home that they can actually afford? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, as outlined in the speech from the throne, housing is a major priority for this government, and we will deliver. With programs like the Housing Accelerator Fund, which will help municipalities build more and better faster. Whether it's building more units per year or increasing affordable housing, we will work with partners to get real results for Canadian families, including with things like helping families buy their first home sooner, with a more flexible first time home buyer's incentive, a new rent to own program, and by reducing the closing costs for first time buyers. look for a solution on this based on science. The Honourable Member for Foothills. Obviously, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister has no idea what I was talking about, but maybe he should ask his members of Parliament for Prince Edward Island who haven't said a single word about this decision. With the stroke of a pen, Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister has devastated Prince Edward Island. Earlier in question period, the Prime Minister used the phrase, even in places like Alberta, in a derogatory way that is frankly unbecoming of the Prime Minister of this country, for shame. We know what the Prime Minister thinks of workers in Western Canada, but at a time when fuel costs are rising out of control, the Prime Minister needs to stop his attack on the workers in Western Canada who provide Canada with a low-carbon, ethical and secure source of energy while merrily cheering as tankers of Saudi oil make their way down the St. Lawrence. Right. Yeah. Does the Prime Minister even know how much fuel has increased in cost since he last took questions in this place? Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. 
Mr. Speaker, allow me to say that over the past many months, we have been working closely with Albertans, uh, whether it's family representatives or nonprofit organizations, who've been pushing their elected representatives to move forward on the $10 a day childcare that, indeed, places like Manitoba and Saskatchewan had even last summer. And it was with great pleasure that we saw the Conservative government of Alberta move forward and sign a historic deal on $10 a day childcare. The challenge, Mr. Speaker, is there is not one federal Conservative representative from Alberta who supports $10 a day childcare. And that is a shame for all Albertans. The Honourable Member for Calgary knows Hill. The number of daycare spaces created by this government, this Liberal government in Alberta, zero. The number of jobs lost in my province under this Prime Minister, hundreds of thousands. that sending tax dollars to fancy think tanks, increasing debt, which increases inflation, is going to somehow lower the cost of basic building goods like lumber, which is out of control, and he has no plan to address this. Does the Prime Minister even know how much a 2 by 4 costs these days? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, it's interesting to hear a Conservative member criticize our plan on housing that inf involved initiatives like working with the municipalities to the tune of $4 billion to invest in more housing, uh, to give for, uh, more, uh, more flexible first-time homebuyers incentives, when the Conservative plan that that member ran on in Calgary Nose Hill was to give tax breaks to wealthy landlords to sell their buildings easier. Mr. Speaker, the Conservatives don't understand the challenges faced by Canadians in the area of housing, because if they did, they'd be proposing a real plan the way we are. The Honourable Member for Calgary knows Hill. The price of everything has increased under this Prime Minister's watch, including housing. Housing is more unaffordable under this Prime Minister. He does not have the courage to put together a plan. He doesn't have the courage to stand up for Canadian workers as he offshores our job. He doesn't have the courage to stand here and come up with smart economic policies that are going to drive down the cost of goods, get our economy back to work. He does not have the courage to put together a vision. So, Mr. Speaker, it begs the question, how much are Canadians paying for chicken these days? The right honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, as far as a rhetorical device goes, accusing an honourable member of cowardice is hardly the kind of tone that I think Canadians want to see uh, in uh, this more constructive House. Canadians returned us with a very clear mandate, all of us, to end this pandemic once and for all, which happens through vaccinations, guys, uh, but also uh, to move forward on investing in things like $10 The tone or the, the sound level is going up that I can barely hear the Prime Minister. I'm going to ask the Prime Minister to start over from the beginning, please. I think, Mr. Speaker, when Canadians sent this House, uh, newly reconstituted House, uh, back to work to end the pandemic, uh, to invest in things like $10 a day childcare, invest in a stronger future and fighting climate change and creating good jobs, they didn't want uh, to hear silly schoolyard insults from. Any